Now, minor facing manslaughter charges for the crash that killed two preteen girls. Remanded once again. All that we know and more right now. Tonight, we're picking up pieces of information. The 16-year-old boy who's accused of causing the East Ligon two-car crash that killed two 12-year-old girls has been remanded again. The boy, now facing manslaughter charges, as the minor appeared before a family and juvenile court November 7th. Now, this is the second appearance for the lad who was pleaded not guilty. Tonight, the question is, where is he being kept until his next arraignment on November 13th? Well, over the next five days. We've been following the story closely. I've got some education for you. My producer and lawyer, Dennis Widam, has got us covered. I like how I say that. It, it would look like you're about to be my counsel. Well, I am your counsel already. <laughs> <laughs> Tell us what's happening. I mean, what's there to know? Well, so um, there's been questions about where exactly the juvenile has been taken to now. Um, there are many who say he's not, he hasn't been taken to a correctional center as was ordered by the court. And, but, I mean... Something has to be said about it when it comes to juvenile and where they are remanded. So that's why I pull out the Section 23 of the Juvenile Justice Act, which talks about the remand of juveniles and what um, possibly can be done when a juvenile is remanded. Well, when the court remands a juvenile, there are some options. Either to commit the juvenile to the care of the juvenile's parents, even though he's in remand. Also, they can commit that juvenile to a guardian or a close relative or any fit person who is willing to take care of the mm. juvenile. It's not all instances that when the juvenile is remanded, he, or he or she must necessarily be taken to a correctional center right. or a bustle homes, as we used to call them. So it's possible that, and, yes... And who is to determine that? The courts. Right. So when the court, ordinarily, the court should grant bail to juveniles. But mm -hmm. where the court finds that it becomes necessary, maybe for the safety of the juvenile himself or herself, or in the interest of the community to, to remand the juvenile, they can consider all these possible options, mm -hmm. including the bustle home or the correctional center, right. and then all these options, committing that juvenile to the parent's care, guardian's care, or a relative. Now, in doing so, um, I mean, when it comes to remanding the juvenile to a remand home, it has to be one which is situated within the area of jurisdiction of the court. So they cannot remand a juvenile, say, to go out of Accra mm -hmm. when they are sitting in Accra. So the questions about where this juvenile had been taken to and whether indeed he was... Of course, but if the court makes an order mm -hmm. that take the juvenile here, you must take the take juvenile, the juvenile in there. Take the juvenile there, like it happened in the... Uh, last you know. week. Yes. So you would notice that last week's order, when the police gave, gave us uh, an update, they were categorical as to what they said, mm -hmm. that it should be taken to a correctional centre. However, he was in court yesterday. We are unable to tell where exactly he's been taken to right. after that, but we do understand that he was remanded again. Right. Now, mind you, the remand period for a juvenile must necessarily not exceed seven days. Right. That's how come each time they remand the juvenile, he has to be brought back to court on the seventh day for that remand warrant to be renewed for him to be sent mm. back. Cumulatively, you cannot remand a juvenile for more than, um, I think, um, two months. I mean, three months, sorry. Right. So if they keep remanding him, mm -hmm. when it's three months, they cannot remand him again. Right. Now, something else happened along the line of the trial. I think the lawyers for the, the boy had come to court to make a plea to the court that the court makes an order towards people who put out the, the mm -hmm. boy's um, it, it images. Now, on. Before, before you talk about that, I yes. just want to stay on this one for a little bit because okay. there had been some confusion surrounding whether or not, like you, you indicated, mm -hmm. whether or not the boy had been sent to the correctional facility yes. or he had been taken home. Yes. I mean, what we, what we are doing now mm -hmm. is to show people that uh, there is that provision in the law yes. uh, surrounding juvenile justice or yes. juvenile cases mm -hmm. that, you know, the remand could be either in, in a correctional facility, yes. juvenile correctional facility, yes. or you, be, you could be given to your, your own parents. Your, your parents. Or your relatives. Or your relatives. Yes, or uh, any indeed. person. And, 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 take, absolutely. Take care of the, the absolutely. Child. And, and what we also notice with this case is in the first instance, mm -hmm. the police released a statement to say that he had been taken to the Osu Correctional Facility. Yes. In this course, one, we don't know. Yes. Of course, that was because the court made a specific order in that regard. Right. Unfortunately, because of the nature of proceedings when it comes to juveniles, it's not, it's not an open court affair. So typically, they will sit in a different part of the court or they will sit on days that ordinary court days don't sit. So you don't get the privilege of getting that information mm -hmm. as you would when it comes to an adult. So Indeed. in this, you only have the parties, the court officers, and any other person that the court would want to be part of the proceedings. Mm -hmm. So it's more like a secretive thing. Indeed. So that's how come, as it stands now, 
even though we have information that he's been remanded right. again, we're unable to tell categorically absolutely. where he's been taken and, to. And, and it's and in conformity with the ju uh, juvenile and justice. Absolutely. And what we are saying with that is, before you jump into conclusions yes. that the police is not doing its job, yes. you must know this law. And that's why we're bringing this education Precisely today. so. Yes. So the other point I was making, so the, the, the family or the, the lawyers for the juvenile had made a plea to the court that an order be made against people who publish the images of the boy on the mm -hmm. internet and all that. But then they were told that, no, there's no need doing that because there's a law which already protects juvenile when it comes to training. That law I will show you pretty shortly. And that each time they see somebody publish the images of mm -hmm. the child, they can make um, a complaint to the police and the police will take that up. So when you look at Section 3 of the Juvenile Justice Act, it says that, for a juvenile, that a juvenile has the right to privacy during arrest, the investigation of an offence, the trial of the offence, and at any other stage of the course or matter. Now pay attention to 3.2. A person shall not in the course of the arrest, investigation, or trial of an offence connected with a juvenile or at any other stage of the course or matter release any information for publication that may lead to the identification of the juvenile. Mm. This is very important. And I will show you a few things that we have also observed here, which moving forward, we recommend that it has to be changed. Now, the police themselves have been releasing statements in respect of this matter. Mm -hmm. But what do they do? The police would release a statement. This is one of the statements that um, was released by the Ghana Police Service, where they were making, they were refuting some claims, suggesting that the boy in question was not taken to the correctional center. They indicate the age of the boy. They put his name out there. They tell who his parents are and a lot more information of that. Right. When you put these pieces together, you're able to identify the person. That clearly cannot be in conformity with what section um, 3, 2, this talks about. Sorry, not here. Um, so I right. showed you an earlier provision. They, they, look, they look almost the same. Yes. <laughs> here. So clearly, it prohibits you from putting out information that will lead, lead to, to the, the identification. identification of but the why general. then do the police keep putting the boy's name out there, his parents' mm. name and all that? Yeah, good question. I mean, the police have come a long way. They used to round up suspects and put their pictures on the internet. Now we are in an area where they don't do that anymore. Sometimes they blur the suspect's faces. Mm. Moving forward, we expect that at least when they're handling things that have to do with the kids or juveniles, they apply this. Okay, very well. Because just as much as it's an accused person, he also did, I mean, it has to be done. Absolutely. In line with. Well, thank you so much for bringing us all that education. Uh, Dennis Wedam Kwaberi. Did I say it right? I'll take it. <laughs> <laughs> we'll be right back. Don't go away.